Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Detours happen for all sorts of reasons. Sometimes in life's detours, much like the detours while we're driving, sometimes God is building something in us, and we literally have to go through in order for God to construct something that didn't exist previous that will set us up for success in the future. Sometimes our detours are self-inflicted. We knew the decision that we should make and we chose to take a route that wasn't the best route. And we find ourselves having to get back on the road to get where we need to go. Sometimes detours happen because of the mistakes of others or or, or they happen because of accidents that just occur. And we run up on an accident. We weren't planning on seeing the accident, but the accident forces us to change trajectory. Today, I wanna talk about the permanent detour. What do we do and how do we handle when our life's path is impacted by a detour that's permanent? When the road closes for good, when the relationship we thought would be forever ends, when the job dies off when the dream doesn't seem to come true. What do we do when we hit the detour where that road is no longer an option? The reason I want to talk about this is because mishandling life's detours can permanently derail your life. There are none of these detours that we can't overcome. There are none of these detours that through God's guidance and and through our seeking Him that we can't overcome. However, if we handle them poorly, they can permanently derail our life. A permanent detour is when a road closes forever. Just recently, there was a lot of flooding out west and in south, the south, and and, and major national park roads were just destroyed. And when they were talking about the repair of the roads, one of the the park managers said the road might never reopen. That views that people had taken for granted seeing and ways that people had used to get to destinations in that national park might not exist any longer because of the damage done. Permanent detours can leave us with a lot of damage. If the road closes in our career, the road closes in, in, in our relationship and it's over. We usually find ourselves sitting in a broken road trying to figure out what next and the pain that can come from those broken relationships and those broken career dreams and devastating events in our lives that change our lives forever. The loss of a loved one unexpectedly. Those moments can lead us to a lot of pain. And let's just be honest, we're a little pain resistant. If we know we can avoid pain, we will. 
But these are the moments that cannot be avoided that we absolutely must navigate. So how do we navigate these kind of permanent detours? In the Old Testament, in the book of Ruth, there's this story of Naomi. And Naomi and Ruth are the main characters of the story. But Naomi and Elimelech, they have, have moved to a foreign place and, and they have moved away because it's a time of famine and they've gone on with their life and they plan to, to be there and to live there. And Naomi and Elimelech, Seem to, things seem to be going okay. They have two children, Malon and Kilion, and then Elimelech dies. And Naomi had planned on living where she was living because that's where Elimelech was from. But she was not from there, and her identity was no longer tied to Elimelech when he died. And she had these two sons, Malon and Kilion, and, and after her initial detour of losing her husband, and, and continuing on a road and altering her path a little bit, she's confronted with the death of her two sons. But her two sons had married local women, Ruth and Orpah. And Naomi is deciding that maybe she should return from where she came from, that maybe, maybe the, there was no option for her, no hope. She even tells Ruth and Orpah, her daughter-in-laws, that they should go on and move on with their lives because there's no hope for her, but there's hope for them. Naomi has found what seems to be a permanent detour. And you know what? Naomi's life took a different direction after this. It, it did not go the way she had planned. Her plans entirely changed. And when she gives these Ruth and Orpah permission to move on, Orpah goes ahead and says, sounds like a good option, and she jets. But Ruth stays behind. She says this, Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there I will be buried. You see, when Naomi ran into a detour, she wasn't the only one impacted by the permanent detour. Ruth's plans had changed too. Ruth was sitting in the middle of a life-altering, life-changing road closed. And in the middle of this, we find that after the detour and the death, and think about the agony of this, right? Elimelech passes away and Ruth seems to recover and find a new path in life and and she's going along with her sons and her daughters. And nearly 10 years later, the pain must have been awful as she loses her sons and once again is faced with the same detour that she thought she had survived and moved on from, where she had lost her identity in her culture. So how do we navigate? I think we can learn a lot from the story of Naomi and Ruth. You see... After the death, we can see in the passage that Ruth begins to see that she has to make some decisions. She has to accept that it happened. She has to come to acceptance. The first step to managing a detour that's permanent is to come to a place of acceptance. It's a real easy point for me to say, but the truth is that over the years, we've noticed a pattern in people who are grieving, in people who come across permanent detours. There's a process, a process of grief that we have to go through that ultimately begins with denial, anger, bargaining, and all of those things have to happen in order for a person to come to a place of acceptance. In the presence of a death or a major loss in life, the process of grief is necessary. And the reason that we have to go through the process of denial, I'm sure that Ruth and Naomi had to have had moments where like, did this really happen to us? How can this be happening to us? Surely this isn't true. And then the moment of saying, man, I'm tired of running into detours and the anger and then bargaining. Like if I can just find a way for this not to be the case. I mean, if, if the road could just reopen somehow, sometimes we get stuck in some of these places but ultimately, we have to get to a place of acceptance that the process of grief 
has finished when we get to a place of acceptance. And I don't want to rush through this because if you've had a permanent detour and you're in the middle of grief, it's a process that you have no choice but to go through. You can try to avoid grief, try to pretend the pain doesn't exist. You can get stuck in anger because of what you've gone through. You can get stuck in deep sadness. But at the end of the day, one thing that has to happen in order to navigate the closed road is to recognize that I have to accept that the road has closed. I mean, we can be in denial and try to drive right through the hole in the road, but the reality is it will eat our car. We can be mad about the fact that it changed our plans and the anger will leach over into every part of our life. We can try to make deals, but the deal is done. We can get stuck and permanently be sad over the loss. And all of those things are understandable for anyone who's had major grief. But in order for us as followers of Christ to navigate our deep grief and our permanent detours, we have to get to a place of acceptance. Sometimes you have to accept that the road is closed. If you're in a place where you've been stuck in denial, anger, bargaining, depression, or, or, or whatever, you may need today to, in order to begin to navigate the future in a way that doesn't derail your life, you may have to deal and deal with and work through those things so you can get to a place to say, it happened, now what? It doesn't mean that it will be painless. As a matter of fact, it will probably be a painful process to get there. So the first step to navigate permanent detours is to accept that the road is closed. The second is you must keep moving. In Ruth chapter two, verse two, it begins by saying one day, Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, one day there came a day we don't know how long the grief lasted. We don't know how long the confusion lasted. We don't know how long they were, they were in this process. Or maybe we, we know that, that Naomi had some moments of bitterness in her life. You can see it in the scriptures. But at some point, they, they came to a place where Ruth leads the moment and says, let me go out. Sometimes after a permanent detour, entering back into relationships after we've been hurt, reconnecting with God's people after church hurt. Re those things are brutal. Sometimes just going and doing things without the person you used to do them with are hard. Sometimes the first step of moving forward is just going outside and getting a cup of coffee somewhere after the breakup. First time that we step out after the, the deep detour is a huge step. And in order to navigate and figure out how to move on with the road, we can't sit in neutral for too long. And so we see Ruth begins to move by saying, let me go out into the harvest fields to pick the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who's kind enough to let me do it. There was a, a code during the day of Ruth that the, the farmers would leave the fringes of the fields and the corners of the fields untouched so that the impoverished the poor, the widows could go and gather enough to at least have food to eat. And Ruth, in navigating this detour, after accepting her loss, accepting her situation, which was drastically changed, she begins to keep moving. So Ruth goes out into the fields. And the third step is we begin to look for a new road. Now, I want to caution you here because what I see often in life is that in order for us to escape the pain and the grief that we feel in our loss, we often hurry to solve the problem rather than to learn to exist again. For instance, so often people go through loss of a loved one and they run to the next one. And what happens is that it's so easy because of the damage that was created by the loss to carry that damage into the next relationship, that the broken trust we experience and we come into the next relationship and, and we start the relationship with distrust because we haven't accepted and we haven't began to move forward. But eventually we do have to look for the new road. Ruth's intention was to live her life with her husband. 
But her husband died. And Ruth went out and began to move forward. After she accepted it, and I'm going to guess it was a process, she began to move forward. And I don't know, maybe the first day she got enough to eat. And then she got up the next day and went back. And there's something to be said for continuing to move forward. We can't find the path that God has for us by sitting still. And it goes on to say, and as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. The scripture says, as it happens, as if it's a circumstance, a random event, a random circumstance, we can often feel when we don't know how to get there any other way than the road we have planned, we can often feel like there's no other possibility, but we won't see or find the path if we sit still. Ruth went out, and while she went out behind the harvesters, it has it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz. Now there was a a line and an order with which a widow could be connected to another man. And it just happened to be that through family of Elimelech, there was a line in which she could become the wife of, and and Elimelech, Boaz is, is related to Elimelech and he would have actually been the second person who could have taken Ruth under his wing. But through a process, eventually, she becomes married to Boaz. Now, you would like to think that this happened quickly. But the truth is, when you read the scripture, you'll find out it was a process of her continuing to move forward, continuing to move forward. There's a moment in the story where you're like, oh, maybe things are going to work out with her through Boaz. But there's, there are some challenges along the way. Because sometimes when one road closes, another one opens but we won't find the open road if we don't keep moving. Interestingly enough, Boaz and Ruth are married. Their needs, Naomi and Ruth's needs are met. They're entered back into the family and reconnected. They find new identity after their detour. Sounds like a great story. And it is. It's it's one of my favorite stories in Scripture of how God seems to come through in the middle of a horrible detour. But see, this wasn't the only thing that was happening here. In the middle of this detour, God was doing something far bigger than just changing the road of Ruth and Naomi. God was using this moment to change history. You see, when you look at Scripture, you will find out that not far down the road, the lineage of David, the king, would come through the line of Boaz. That God was changing the road they were on and ultimately using them as a part of his plan for one of the great kings in all of history to be born. And then 14 generations later, through that same lineage that was created by this detour, the Son of God would be born. 14 generations after David came Jesus, the one who has power over all of our detours the one who is sovereign in his plans for us, who is good in his provision for us. So this morning, maybe you're not right in the middle of a permanent detour, but we will all face a permanent detour. When we do, how will we navigate it? Maybe you're in the middle of that right now, or you're on the backside of a permanent detour. Maybe you're right in the middle of it. What step can you begin to take? Maybe it's stepping back into community with people even though you've been hurt. Maybe it's stepping into the next day, one breath at a time. Maybe it's getting out of the house. Maybe it's getting moving again. 
Maybe it's starting to have hope in the future. Maybe it's just that today's the day where you recognize you have to accept what has happened, that there's no other option. Maybe it's time to put away the anger and look for understanding. Maybe you're sitting at the broken road today and your next step is just simply beginning to look for other options. Bethel, I love you. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages for Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give. With online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.